point, sir, was that there's no evidence that this was put before Madame Jolie or whoever the foreign minister was at the time either. It all came to a head because of the leak. And what I'm suggesting, you have rightly said that the leak is criminal. Absolutely right. Should not have happened. But uh, this this debate, which I say is not healthy, but was festering in your government, boiled over with someone taking the law into their own hands, what they ought never to have done, and revealing all this to the world, and only then did you react. There was nothing proactive. That's my concern, sir. Well, the issue with the criminal who leaked this information is um, they got it wrong in what they leaked. And regardless of what's in the newspapers or not, it is incumbent upon a serious, responsible government not to react to partisan attacks or uh, erroneous uh, but uh, uh, salacious uh, headlines but to react on the substance of things. And that's exactly what we did when we, as a government collectively, in the person of the foreign minister, made the determination uh, that uh, it was time to uh, PNG uh, Zhao Wei. So you seem to be suggesting that Michael Chong overreacted in worrying about his relations in Hong Kong. No, not at all. Well, that is when, what you're suggesting. No, I am, I am suggesting that confronted with or faced with a leak that is itself erroneous, that suggests that uh, China uh, has uh, threatened with violence his family, as the inference of the leak and the subsequent headlines were, Mr. Chong had every right to be concerned and even outraged, as did everyone. Uh, as were we by the idea that his family had been threatened with direct physical violence, which is what the leak and the leaker um, suggested. We now know that that is wrong, and that is why it is really important that governments act based on actual analysis and actual intelligence and evaluation of that intelligence, and not just what appears, as you say, in the Globe and Mail. Well, sir, I told Mr. Klo this yesterday, and I'll say it to you. Mr. Chong does not share your seeming confidence that his relatives in Hong Kong will never be coerced or threatened or even physically harmed by that state. It is not a rule of law democracy. It is not a state that has a track record of respecting uh, people's freedom of conscience, freedom of political thought. And so these concerns that he has, whether they are based in intelligence that was misinterpreted in the Global Mail or not, are legitimate and fair and you seem to be yes. wanting to downplay them and I want to no, push back on that. I am not downplaying them in the least. What I am saying is as a responsible government, as a, a government that is making decisions about how best to protect Canadians, including uh, and especially parliamentarians, we need to rely on the best intelligence and evidence and analysis and recommendations of our security agencies. And that is what we have leaned on in terms of concluding what threats were there on Mr. Ch uh, Mr. Chong and uh, what, uh, what positions and postures we should take because of it. We are a country that leans on its intelligence agencies, not on criminals leaking things to newspapers. One final point, sir. The evidence repeatedly has been that other parts of the government have not relied on CSIS's warnings. In fact, the Minister of Public Safety doesn't even seem to have received them or certainly didn't read them. The same is true of the NSIA. The same seems to be true of the clerk of the Privy Council. So it's all well and good for you to say we're a country that respects our security agencies. The evidence, sir, has been that the security agency has been sidelined and the concerns it's been trying to raise have been neglected and sometimes not even read. I think much of what uh, we have demonstrated through this commission as a government is that we have taken seriously from the very first day 
threats to national security through creating things that Mr. Chong was opposed to, like the National Security and Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarians. But I would suggest if Mr. Chong wanted to be part of an organization that was taking security seriously, he implore his leader, Pierre Polyev, to get a security briefing so he can hear directly from CSIS on the challenges threatening his institution, the Conservative Party of Canada.